Story time. My date doesn't pay her bill. I get to the restaurant 10 minutes early, and she's already there eating appetizers. Then she goes ahead and orders the most expensive dinner on the menu and tells me that she did it because she knows that I'm paying. Small talk fails, and for 45 minutes, she complains about how no one is refilling her wine glass. She mentions how she was told that I make a decent salary multiple times. I try to be civil and change the subject. Awkward conversational topics ensue, nothing even close to first aid etiquette follows. Three quarters of the way through, I go to the bathroom, and our waiter walks by, asking me if we're doing a reality show or something along those lines, since he has seen this disaster in motion. We talk about how wild this woman is for about five minutes, and then I ask him to stop at our table and ask about the bill. I immediately say split checks and give him eight. Your stuff is too expensive. Okay, so don't buy it. I could get something really similar at this other place for weight loss. Hey, you're welcome to do that. No problem. You don't understand. I'm not going to buy it from you because it's way too expensive. I mean, that's cool. I've, I've got these folks over here. They're cool with the price, so I'm all right. You go ahead and you can go pick it up someplace else. It's cool. You're overcharging. Hmm. <clears throat> Let's be honest, you don't value what I do. It doesn't matter what price I charge, you're not going to pay it. I'm not losing a customer, you never would have been one in the first place. So no, I don't set my prices for people that don't value me. And neither should you. My fiancé and I are high school sweethearts and we've been together for about 12 years. We were engaged for around 3 when he passed away due to an accident in the beginning of 2020. A few weeks ago, his brother came to visit me and he's planning to propose to his girlfriend. He asked me if he could have the family's engagement ring. The ring my fiancé gave me is a family ring which had been in the family for generations. I have been wearing this ring for almost three years and it's a symbol of our relationship. I don't feel ready to give it up. When I told him this, he got upset and said it's a family ring and it belongs to him now that his brother is dead. I told him to get out. I called his mom to let her know why I wanted to keep the ring. She told me she wouldn't have minded if I had been married to him, but I wasn't so I'm not part of the family and therefore I should return the ring. She said I'll move on one day and it's unfair to hold on to a ring that I will never wear again. Especially a ring that belongs to her family for generations. I would have at least considered giving back the ring in a few years. I just can't bear the thought of parting with this ring now. So I told her I'm sorry that she felt that way, but her son gave me this ring and I'm not giving it back. Since then, his mom and his brother have been spamming my phone with messages and calls about how I'm trying to steal their family ring. So am I wrong for wanting to keep the ring? Hi guys, my name's Jill, and today I went crazy and made this Valentine's Day cake. But you know what's even crazier? I didn't make chocolate cake for once, I actually made red velvet, but of course I still took it out of the oven with my bare hands, so don't even worry, nothing's changed. Okay, anyway, so I leveled off all my cakes, and then I stacked them up with some of this vanilla bean buttercream, then I crumb coated the whole thing in this thin layer of buttercream, popped the baby in the fridge, shook it back out, and then I coated it in this thicker layer of buttercream, I whipped out my handy dandy cake comb, and I made all these fun little stripes in the cake, popped the baby in the freezer for a long time, well it was freezing, I made these fun little ombre buttercream colors from like this light pink to this reddish color. I filled in all the crevasses, as Heber would say. Then I smoothed the whole thing out and I had these fun little like ombre striped sort of things. Then I made some of this chocolate ganache for the sides, dripped that down, hashtag drip too hard, ew. Okay, then I used all my leftover frosting to make this frosting sausage. And then I made all these little stars with that frosting on top. And then I had my final cake and I ate a lot of it and it was a fun time. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye. Hi guys, my name's Heber, and this week I made a birthday cake for one of my friend's moms. So I started off by making some chocolate cake, and then I wrapped those cake layers in some plastic wrap and put them in the freezer overnight. So then the next day, I went to Walmart looking homeless and bought all this stuff to make some vanilla buttercream. And then I started stacking the cake layers and iced it in a crumb coat. And if you don't know what a crumb coat is, it's this thin layer of frosting. It's like the first coat of frosting around the cake. That way it locks in the crumbs and that way like the chocolate cake crumbs don't poke out on the sides. So then I took this icing comb that makes like grooves in only the bottom part. And then I dyed some buttercream and filled in those grooves. That way it was like half stripes on the bottom, like and it looks pretty cool. So then I put some sprinkles around the bottom and hand placed a lot of them. Then I dyed some buttercream blue, piped some swirls on top, and then sprinkled some more sprinkles on the top. And yeah, that was my finished cake and I'm very happy with how it turned out. Bye. Hi, so we're gonna make an Among Us cake because I had an order for one today. So yeah, first thing you break it out of the mold and then 
I don't know what I'm saying. I need to make the background color, the frosting color. Uh, I wanted to do like a really dark blue, but I couldn't put too much black in it because it stains your mouth really bad. So I did like a blue. I don't know. Here I am icing it. I don't know how to do these voiceover things. Okay, here I am icing. Okay, hurry up. Okay, now I put it in a whip bag so I could do the trim. Oh my gosh, too fast. Now I'm I'm coloring the guys. Okay, I did a pink and a blue and an orange and and a red okay there we go then i put their little goggles on and then i outlined them in black oh my gosh look how shaky my hand is hello why did it pause hello okay then trim okay <laughs> okay then i put some little gold sprinkles and now it's done look how cute okay it's kind of ugly but whatever okay hello let's make my daughter's sweet 16 cake Man, I put the fondant on and it tore, so I had to go ahead, take it off, and put it all over again, and then fix it up. This is for the bottom tier, that's for the top tier. As you can see, I am a bit of a perfectionist. I had to make sure the edges were nice and sharp and crisp. There you have it. Now I'm adding the quilted pattern so that it's easier to follow when I do the stitching design. And I'm gonna make it look like a soft pillow. So what I do is I have this little tool that helps me to create little like you see there, basically. It explains it pretty well. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a little silver pearl, edible pearl, inside each of one of those holes. And now it looks like a quilted soft pillow that you can easily sleep on. So putting the top tier on, adding a pearl border, and painting it in silver, adding the top number, sweet 16. You can see the decor in the background. And here is the final finished product. I'll show you the rest of the decor later, but I hope you guys love it. Um, if you see this, please don't scroll away. I kind of make art, and honestly, I feel like nobody here on TikTok uh, cares about art. So, if... Okay, so I'm making a cookie cake because regular cake just isn't hitting the same anymore. So I started by making some vanilla cake. I baked them, let them cool, wrap them, then threw them in the freezer. Then I made some cookie dough. By the way, I get a lot of comments saying I'm going to get diabetes. Joke's on you because I already have it. Anyway, I baked them and these look so good. I really wanted to eat them, but I didn't. Okay, next day, I made some icing, unwrapped the cakes, I leveled them. And I also got the cookies out. Then I put everything together and crumb coated it and let it chill again. Now I'll put some blue food coloring into some icing and um, I never know how to explain things but I didn't fully mix it if you get what I mean. Then I iced the cake with this, let it chill for a bit and then scraped it. It added like this marble effect which is not what I was going for but I like it. Okay, now I added a drip and piped on top and it's done. Um, I tried cutting into it though, it didn't end well. Maybe this cake isn't the best idea. To be honest, it makes sense. Everything was going too well at this point, so I had to mess something up. It tasted great though. Anyway, it's done. Okay, thanks. Bye. So I asked people in my cake group for their wildest stories and I thought I'd tell y'all the best ones. So one person said, I was messing with this dude for a while and everything seemed normal, right? So he orders his birthday cake for me and invited me to his party, but I had already told him that I wouldn't be able to make the party because it was an upscale party on a Saturday, which is my busiest day. So, I mean, I wasn't prepared. I was a hot mess. Anyways, I go deliver the cake to the event. And when I get there, he tells me I can stay for a drink. So I'm like, yeah, okay. One drink, one hug to celebrate your birthday with you, big daddy. So we stand in there chatting it up. And this man whispers in my ear, don't do anything crazy because my girlfriend is the one in the green dress over there. Like, sir, what? Then this man had the nerve to say, you can stay though, just don't make it obvious. So as I'm leaving, a girl gets my attention and stops me and says she wants to talk to me. Like and follow for part two.